this is Jill, your tutor for the month. We're drawing the subject of landmarks around Hartlepool and today we're going to draw the Ward Jackson Park Bandstand. Now it was built in 1901, so it's a late Victorian bandstand. Yeah. As at one time there was many crowds who used to go and listen to the music. There used to be a band that would play on a Sunday afternoon. Right, let's get started then. Let's put a dot again at the top of the page where you want your top of your bandstand to go. Well, we're going to start with a little bit of a weather vane. So we're going to put an N and a W at the top of the page. And a little line down there, a little arrow across with your fine liner, and make like an arrow pointy shape there. Another little line there, and that's the top of your weather vane. I've got a little line in the middle of there, right? And we're going to draw like a, a curved triangle. So the two lines, one line to the right and one line to the left. You can use a ruler if you want. There's little lines at the other side. Notice that this curved triangle, the, the line at the bottom is wider, much wider than the top two angles. I'll draw a line off the ruler again. I believe I remember from maths, one of the few things I do remember from maths was that the triangle with the two equal angles at the top and the longer angle at the bottom is called an isosceles triangle. Right. A little bit at the bottom. Just getting a little bit of extra detail in. This building structure was wrought made out of wrought iron in Glasgow so it travelled quite away before it was delivered to Hartlepool specially purpose built that's where the joins are for the where the iron work would have joined to join the panels they would have been welded together you know uh, my granddad was a welder. He worked in Vickers Armstrong down on the River Tyne just after World War II. Right, what we'll do is add some vertical lines. This is the main body of the clock tower. I need to put like a foundation where the bricks would go right at the bottom. Join that up. And I think in those lines again by going over them, yeah. And the same on the left hand side. Right. A little bit of a wider line there. There's going to be a brick foundation for the house structure. Right. So I'll put in a couple of lines there and I'm going to draw a line across the middle of the bricks. Because there would have been two levels of bricks to be used. Again, a very beautiful landmark in Hartlepool. Although it is painted in green we're just going to stick again to the monotone because we're going, I'm going to introduce you to a, another technique after I we draw the pillars in as well. Yeah. There's some simple pillars to split it up. Alright. Been about four pillars. 
going into this building. I imagine the ladies in their crinoline long dresses and high collars and the men would have been in their smart suits or in collared shirts. In their Sunday best. Right. Line across. Another line across underneath. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to put some curly, curly bits. I'll put another line down there. Another line down that end. And another line up there. And the wrought iron skills were shown. So you can do some backward S shapes and forward S shapes. It would have shown the skills that these blacksmiths would have had at that time. Just curve them around there. We can do it nice and steady. Uh, we'll do some more that end into the middle of the page. The War Jackson Park was named after the first mayor in Hartlepool. War Jackson, he also had a school built especially for children, primary school children. He was a very wealthy man, but did a lot of good for the area. He has a park, the park and the bandstand and the fountain are both very important landmarks in Hartlepool. As it was a very busy and prosperous town port turn back in the 1890s and 1900s. Right, what we're going to do now, we're going to introduce a different technique called, I'm going to pull that across there for a bit and across there for a bit of ground and can have some wobbly, wobbly trees. Yeah, and pull them down there. Wobbly line for the, the trunk, and wobbly line up there. So what we're going to do now is a technique called stippling. Right, this was a technique that was used back in the 1890s uh, by an artist, a French artist called Georges Seurat, who did make his, he painted his images such as the bathers that was painted in about 1890 in Paris along the River Seine. It was a local scene, yeah, like this is a local scene. But what he did was use a lot of tiny dots if you have your pen right you can see all of the tiny dots close together to make it darker further apart to make it appear that the shadows lighter this also like the previous tutorial when we learn about the hatch and shows that you can add shadow and shade. It's important to look first at your 
image that you have, your photograph. And see and think, oh, is the light coming from the top end of the page? Is it coming from the bottom end of the page? Is it coming from the side of the page? You can do this. Uh, quite close together, but I'm going to take them a little bit further apart. A little bit further apart. Yeah. I'm going to have the shadow mainly on the falling the light will be falling on the left hand side so there's not going to be much stippling carried out in that area right this takes technique takes a little bit longer than the hatching because the dots A much smaller way of sketching. Yeah, well, Jackson Park is one of my favourite areas to go and sit on a, a Sunday evening, afternoon. And there was a band, it might have been the Salvation Army. Uh, that came just before Christmas, about that period of time, and played a lot of Christmas songs. And there were a few people, including myself, a crowd of people enjoying the afternoon. It's just an example of this stippling. You can see I've left the curly bits blank you can fill them in a little bit if you want with a little bit of line work or just leave them blank the stippling will show them as though they're highlighted on the page it's just a case of continuing on and enjoying the experience of this lovely technique. Very calm and a lovely way to spend a day, even a Sunday afternoon, if you want to uh, have a nice, quiet, relaxing sketching session. Just a case of continuing on. Let's do that lightly. I'll just show you. Don't put as much, as many dots on that side because that's where the light mainly shines. You've just got your line work you now. Start from the top, make it darker, just shows the detail. I'm going to go around those letters again, make them a little bit more 3D. And you can use the effect of the stippling around the panels, the ironwork panels. Take that to the bottom. I'll go along the vertical line at the top. 
so remember the shapes guys a triangle isosceles triangle at the top a rectangle for the main body a skinny rectangle at the bottom where the bricks go and some lines to represent the poles And the poles were I'll put a little bit of detail at the top there because they were like in a there was a lot of buildings drawn in a classical style which was a copy of Roman architecture so they could have been ionic I think they were known as ionic pillars where you had this little half circles carved at the top continue on to make this darker and then again further apart to make the dots lighter very relaxing it can take quite a while to do this you don't have to rush it you can just take it nice and steady again going down to the bottom of the page continuing on dots close together it's good to put the close the dots close together near to where the detail is say of the, the wrought iron curved areas there we go further apart in the middle close together a little bit of detail in there a few dots at the bottom all close together and again a little bit further apart There. further apart remember the darker nearer the detailed areas nearer your line work together further apart on this panel again the more you do it the more confident you get with a technique Thank you very much for joining this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon, guys.